step out. Yeah, the first step out. We need to step out. We could keep going. <laughs> <up. Okay. laughs> Terry, what's your schedule? How much longer are you with us? I could say until about one. Oh, you can? Okay, yeah. great. Yeah, then I'm sure everyone would love to have some tea. <laughs> In fact, I, I apologize if I'm talking a bit too much, but, but please, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll answer some more questions. Uh, All we do. Yeah. And how do we, you know, really, uh, you know, we can get out the final lead out of uh, those situations. Yeah, but I have two yeah. aspects. One, one aspect he was talking about the funding part and how those yeah. things work, like what his expertise yeah. is. The second part is ours is about delivery. Mm -hmm. Between mm -hmm. these two, you must actually, I mean, one by one, if you can explain, awesome. this is what awesome. I thought. Then I think we'll just have a real bad idea. Yeah. 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 You, so we can start with the, the way uh, Dr. Namde wants. We can do no, that. And I, I thought there was many. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's right. yeah, so that, that, that's better than a Q&A. Yeah, let's do it that way. So, uh, David, uh, two questions. In fact, conceptually, I'm very excited about the concept of change for sale. Uh, last time also we discussed this. Now, there are few questions and concerns on textual. This is what they're talking about, the technical delivery, and how it works. Uh, why I say I'm excited about this because already there is a proof of concept for this. You'll be very glad to know from government of India in skilling sector. This is a model that we have adopted in skilling India. So government of India has created a fund, and so uh, all of us are getting a loan with a ensured business out of it. Loan to develop infrastructure and business to execute uh, from that infrastructure and in 4 to 5 years time we need to return back. Mm -hmm. This is happening in a uh, training sector but this is the line which government of India is seriously thinking to put up funds, going, uh, getting away with the grants, taking that mid part of encouraging social enterprises rather than normal NGOs. And which part of government is doing that? Uh, there is a ministry called Ministry for Skill and Entrepreneurship yeah. Development. National Skills Development Council. Yeah. 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 So, and there's three sectors. Yes. Uh, so healthcare, for example, is one. Very and there are certain scale indicators. <laughs> uh, presently, uh, 200 plus enterprises have been supported through that. And uh, throughout India, they are trying to create this, uh, to achieve this uh, Skilling India objectives. You've gotten money for that. Has anybody yes. else gotten yeah. money for that? We're contributing. We're not taking money. We're building schools right. around us. Right. Jai so, I'd like to no. be a partnership with the policy level tweaking in that. Okay, so you're also, okay, so there's yeah. so three already working on the public sector. Uh, no, it's uh, 75 25 percent. Yeah. But if I don't have any money, then I'm not going to be Okay, but uh, you, uh, part of the directors should be, I mean, uh, should be SBI or one of those people should have invested or not. No. That is a startup uh, in the world. I mean, what, what would be really useful for me is if someone could volunteer to write up that, just write a, a one pager on the program, who the players are, um, who. I mean, what what re, the the way we can add the most value is you show us the network that exists around that program. Right. And then we connect our network to that network, and then we see how the networks interconnect. And we'll sometimes see things that you wouldn't see, you'll see things we wouldn't see. If we can figure out an easy way to interface on that, then we can move much faster. Yes. So the, the tagline for Government of India itself is still speed scale mm -hmm. with sustainability. So all the initiatives are going to be in the direction. Mm -hmm. That is the new part where Niti Aayog has approved it. This is one. Second, coming from the fair trade world, see I would like to share a beautiful example. Uh, there is an organization that we created in UK, uh, Shared Interest. Uh, shared Interest has been created precisely for this reason, that whenever uh, medium enterprises in the livelihood sector would like to scale up, they need working capital loans. Though they have work orders in place, but they don't have the working capital right. to get into. So all the fair trade organizations got together uh, globally and formed this specialized organization called Shared Interest. Where individual, even in like you know, some of us can also invest in Shared Interest. Further, Shared Interest uh, lends to fair trade organizations who have 
uh, work orders with them, but no money to scale up their operations. Hmm. And successfully, it is running for almost uh, more than a decade now, and several sighted organizations throughout the world got benefited out of it. That is good. Third example, also loans or some grants? Equity. Uh, uh, sorry, grants involved with. These are all interest free loans to interest -free loans, uh, yeah. suppliers. And uh, how it works is shared interest actually mobilizes money from the buyers, risk free money, mm -hmm. and then gives to uh, loans to the suppliers. Mm -hmm. So that the risk has been taken by shared interest. And the same buyer who is giving order. They would not like to give directly the loan to the member because they are not sure whether they will get back the money or not. Right. But they would like to invest in shared interest, when shared interest ensures that you know, your money at least will be given back. Yeah. So well, they're they're de-risking it by de doing it that yeah. way and yeah. they also can, they can gather money as a portfolio. That, that sounds like the new product which you yeah. have been talking yeah. about, the yeah. product is being created. Yeah. Well, well proven, uh, but there are some legal constraints to actually bring that to India. The last two, three years we have been trying to scale that model, but indirectly uh, many of our members are benefiting through their uh, buying organization. Okay. So we just treated the model rather than uh, giving uh, Indian producers, the same company is giving loan to the buyer along with the work order. Then that money comes to India, they complete the work, repay them. Have you ever gone through all of the people who've received those loans that you work with and prioritized them in terms of their own scalability? Because you've already done that. Yes, because ours is a members network. Yeah. We support our members. Right. No, third model that I would like to share is in the health sector. Amos International, to be partnered with Amos International, mm -hmm. we are working on a global concept of mutual health setting up of mutual health organizations on a scalability level. Again, most uh, international in Europe from their volunteers generates this money and spends in developing countries to set up these MHOs. Around about 50 such projects are happening all over the globe. In India, two such projects are happening. Uh, we are piloting one. The whole concept is the basic money which is required to set up a mutual health organization owned and sustained by the community itself will be funded by uh, MHO uh, for five years. Funded by who? Uh, MOS International. How do you spell it? MOS, E M M A U S. It's a solidarity movement in Europe. Okay. I didn't know anything about that. Uh, it's a great movement happening again, voluntary days. So they, they take up these issues and uh, come out with sustainable solutions. So they identify a local partner yeah. who will be able to scale it up and they fund for five years and slowly the grant component decreases and by, by the time they need to make it self-sustainable. And believe me, in year two itself, it has got self-sustainable because uh, uh, this is all owned by the community. They only will decide how much to charge, how much to repay and all those things. So, so we should get on the phone with those folks as soon as possible. Yes. So I mean, that, that would be a very good conversation to have because if, we can, if we can build them in as the investors or part of the investor pool, then they have a special interest in the healthcare space and they become an optimal partner for leveraging the healthcare part of what, what you're trying to do. So that, that's great. That's really good news. So a few questions I have. Mm -hmm. uh, you talked about impact investing. Our experience with impact in investing is uh, the fear of scale. <laughs> I personally presented in US several business plans. What they funded was very small projects. And I'm, I'm sorry. You know, uh, I was not able to convince them. I was not able to convince them I'll be able to achieve this. Yeah. And believe me, they have not funded us, yeah. but they said US business plan is one of the best. Yeah. And coming back in India through our own Jugadu. Ideas, we were able to sustain that business plan. But 25 plus, who is who of uh, US impact investors? They could not realize this is possible. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, you're saying we're in total agreement. I mean, I mean, there's a, there's a hundred different ways of saying this, and they all come to the same conclusion. So the the, the operational side of this is every impact investor thinks he or she is trying to create their own diversified portfolio. Yes. That's insane, yes. and it means they will 
there will never be an efficient way to interface with someone who's trying to personally create a diversified portfolio for each person. That, that, that just will never work. And that's one of the key reasons why impact investing isn't scaling. But to understand the, 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 the level that is in scaling, all you need to do is take the renewable energy number from the most recent measured year, $330 billion deployed. They're talking about going to $600 billion and then a trillion. Now, I don't think they'll be able to do it in two years, but the fact that they're trying is phenomenal. Um, if you take the impact investing number as the measure of the other 16 SDGs, so renewable energy is one SDG, impact investing in total is the other 16, it's 16, and we have a tiny percentage of them, so we wasted an enormous amount of time of most of the people we never give any money to, and, and, and we don't scale, because that's we're just wasting all those people's time, and we're doing getting paid to do that for us. So, I mean, I don't mean to be so cynical, but, but you know, it just, that model doesn't scale. So, you know, what, it, it, what I'm envisioning here, and you know, this will take a little while to do, but if the first 200 million comes in, and that gets deployed across true scale results, and those results get purchased by these pools of money, what you've essentially done is you've demonstrated that you can skip the fund model. You don't need the fund model if that, if that model works. And it works at 10 to 100x the scale, and it prioritizes organizations that are already scaled, whereas you know, the typical impact investor wants to go in at the very beginning and then control everything and parcel out the growth over if it ever happens. They, they, you're, they, they're afraid of scale. You, you said it perfectly. You bring them an organization that's already scaled. That doesn't work. I don't get to control everything. I don't get the biggest share at the beginning. I don't get to decide who else comes in. I don't get lever. I don't have all the leverage. These guys have a lot of leverage. That, I, that doesn't feel comfortable with me. Um, so you know, it, it's just it's all of those things. So part of this, I mean, I actually talk about bypassing Wall Street. So so one of the advantages. The fastest way to get the attention of Wall Street is to bypass them. There's no amount of conversations with them will ever make the progress of skipping them. That will make much more progress than going and talking to them. So, so this is a way of essentially offering the scale product. I mean, I have a four-page document, and when people ask me for it, I say, I'm sending you this document. You have to understand the purpose of this document. This document is designed to have 90% of the people tell me I'm crazy. But tell me really fast, so I don't waste any time with them. And, and, and that, yeah, that's what I do. I literally send them that document, and 90% of the people say, you're nuts. That's, that's, that's not the way we do it. And that's great. That saves me an enormous amount of time not wasting my time talking with people who, for a living, waste other people's time. Um, so that's, you know, that's part of the essence of this is, Offer the product, offer scale for sale to the people who actually made the money. Not to their advisors, not to their, um, you know, other funds or funds of funds or funds of funds of funds. Actually offer the product to the people who understand how, you made, how they made their own money and who see that if scale gets me impact and in some cases gets me product, it's a three for one. So, uh, you know, for example, out of the box, I was just thinking the starting point would be uh, this is again an experience that we had in the trade trade world. When people said trade trade is not possible. And today, all the major corporates, including uh, Nestle and all, are forced to get into trade trade. Why this has happened? Because of conscious consumerism. And the consumer said either you adopt it or you are going to leave it. So, there is, uh, so that consumer pool has actually worked out. So even in case of scale also, like for example if I visualize ACAL, can we think of something like ACAL social impact bond purchased by 100,000 individual donors of ACAL, which creates a further, uh, you know, uh, whichever corporate would like to really invest or whichever fund would like to invest, but then there is a huge 100,000 US citizens are their clientele. They would like to really showcase that I am also part of your uh, 
protein in fat. It's kind of probably sourcing. Yeah. It's all about yeah. protein. Yeah. Yeah. So if we can have some indicators like what do we mean by scalability? It is not only in terms of operation, but also scalability in terms of mobilizing uh, resources, including the individual funds. If you get ten dollars, that will mobilize from hundred thousand people. But if any organization does that, that means we really do not need any fund to operate. Already. It's has, another way to bypass the funds, right? Yeah, so I mean it has already proved it. Yeah. But now after proving, we are just inviting uh, the funds to invest in this because now it is a proven <coughs> fund. From 60,000 villages, we would like to get into 100,000. That is where the funds are required. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so here, here's, here's my experience on that and talking to the, the players in that space. The, the co founder of uh, yeah, what's the second largest? The second largest crowdfunding guy, it, 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 Indiegogo. So the, the co-founder of Indiegogo explained this to me, and ever since he explained it to me, I viewed crowdfunding a little bit differently. So the 90% of the successful crowdfunding models look like this: one third of the money is pre-committed by the people bringing the project forward and contributed in the first 48 hours by people who were committed before it was launched. One third of the money comes from those same people's own networks. So two thirds of the money for successful projects are worked up and delivered by the people running the projects. The crowdfunding side only provides a third of the money in 90% of the successful projects. You hear about the 10% where the thing blew up and got a whole bunch of money from the crowdfunding side, but that's only 10% of the successful programs. The work to deliver that two-thirds of the money is really significant. And so what you end up with is a situation where you have to compete the work to do that against the other alternatives. Now, if you're competing meeting with 30 impact investors to raise $200,000 because they're all diversifying their portfolios, that looks really good. But it doesn't look so good if you're competing it with being part of a portfolio of enterprises who are, who've aggregated their demands such that they can talk to the people with the big money. So, so it, if you think about, I, I spend a lot of time thinking about virtual cycle creation. So if, if, if one of the quadrants is crowdfunding, then the question is what are the other three levers that if you pull those levers in the right sequence, you end up with a virtuous cycle. So in my opinion, the crowdfunding lever is, in most cases, the fourth lever that gets pulled, not the first or second. And the, the, the first or second lever that gets pulled, in, in some cases, it's actually the infrastructure lever, the lever that you talked about people loaning money for for the skill development. If you pull that lever, you know, first or second, then that gets the whole operation going with a, a, a fairly significant amount of resource that flows into creating the first round of scale. And it creates a set of followers that if you had to build them for pulling the crowdfunding lever, it would be too expensive. Now, in some cases, one of those three levers is the government. And you actually pull the government lever ahead of pulling the crowdfunding. In some cases, it's the corporate partner lever. And you actually pull that lever ahead of pulling the crowdfunding lever. But in my experience, the crowdfunding lever is usually three and four in a successful virtual cycle creation. And most people think of it as one and two. And again, I think that's backwards. Uh, you, 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 do, you have to do so much work to pull it as one relative to what work you have to do to pull it as three or four that you're much better off focusing the initial resource on pulling the other levers ahead of the crowdfunding lever. David, uh, I have recently researched about crowdfunding and I was going to Kickstarter. So Kickstarter has a very clearly defined countries in which only developed world is there. So that is one. Which are the major crowdfunding platforms where Indians you know, you can get. Number two, even Kickstarter defines that it is for a creative project. Mm -hmm. right. Okay, so if it would not include social activism. So are there separate... Uh... Don't think about the world the way we're thinking about it. 
they all think about it the way that first guy I talked to thought about it. What's the easiest way to get the money to the table for that particular instrument that will make that particular loan at that particular interest rate, and I'm done. So that's always how they will think about it. So you have to just realize going in that if you're trying to create something much bigger that actually scales, that creates the experiences among those lenders in the first round where they are buying scale and having this wonderful experience around that loan that they provided, that won't look to them like the easiest way to do it. That will look really complicated to them. And, and, and to be honest, they're right until you get credible scale, until the product actually becomes visible. And the product isn't visible to them. They, they don't understand what a scale purchase looks like. They don't understand the personal experience I have when I'm getting both saved the children and all the children. <laughs> now everybody understands how I get to sponsor the child and that experience. What people have never experienced is sponsor the whole school and all the children in it. <laughs> And that's how you guys have broken through and others have broken through, but that's never been visible to the lending investing side of the market. It's not, it, you can go through a whole funding conversation with those guys, it'll never come. No one will ever even suggest it's a relevant topic, much less have a substantive conversation about it. I have a question, right? I'm putting uh, forward to all of this August gathering, maybe the younger lot can enlighten us. See, we are sitting here, uh, now listening to social enterprises the model the way we work we work with the volunteers for the service delivery we don't charge anything we work in almost 50,000 uh, you know villages all across the country on education sector and in healthcare sector it is close to uh, 500 villages we work in and for service delivery of even in the healthcare we don't charge anything how does this social you know impact investment will come handy in our kind of model because we are just spenders. There are donors who give money to us and we spend in line. Volunteers give people like me or Dr. Bhatia. We give our time to the work. See, this kind of, you know, SIBs, bonds and all that, we don't have any, you know, money to return. So how do we look at it? I mean, I was talking to Malikji before, to Dr. Bhatia, that probably we are misfit in this gathering. No, not really. No, not really? No, no, no. So this is what I wanted to hear. I have nothing to say. So even though for the training of Arogya Sevikas, we no. don't charge anything. No, we we rather depends. pay them on yeah. radium to come to the training and serve the people in the villages. Okay. You, you, you guys are giving um, education. It's all free. Health. Yeah, free. Health, healthcare education or healthcare. healthcare. Free. What we are doing is, we, we are um, gathering people to utilize your services. Okay, we motivate people to utilize the services which are uh, available to them. And many of them are either not aware of. It is like this, again, I tell you, yoga is good for health and meditation is good for health. But how many of us have done today? None of us. Similarly, there are umpteen number of, you know, uh, facilities or, you know, things are available. So. You should motivate people to utilize that. In that, I don't have any money. We, we spend around 0.25 dollars per annum for doing this work. And we have a project. Right now we are working. I have to write the integrity of the project about you know, manpower and etc. Uh, we want to cover 40 million people in Uttar Pradesh. That is 17% of Uttar Pradesh population. Mm -hmm. And 10 million dollars will be our uh, is what we have to raise. Whether we will be able to do it or not, I don't know, but I think we will be able to do it. So we will be able to do it over a period of next five years. Now, I mean, there is no money. So what I am suggesting is, let's, let's think he is he's, he's somebody, uh, government, the government of Nigeria. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Perfect show. Yeah. <laughs> so, so there is a bond. My aim, what assurance I give is, I scale it up. I will scale it up to... 40% uh, of Uttar Pradesh. When I scale it up to 40% of Uttar Pradesh, there are seven investors who have invested money to pay the interest. 
plus you pay uh, you know some money for that for the donation government of nigeria imagine has got a huge fund uh, i mean nigeria is just an example so it can be canada or us or you have a lot of money. there are a lot of funds which are for charity and uh, anything given in charity well, not anything given in charity everything given in charity does not get utilized properly yeah, right. yeah. so think of people like maybe a car foundation or maybe you know uh, all others you, you give it to them because they are able to scale <laughs> the, the moment they scale you give it to that particular fund Oh, I agree with you. That is, that means somebody else is paying for somebody else's. Yeah. Uh, no, return is not coming to the investor from the investment which is made in my work. You know, he looks at return. So wherever it comes from. So the important, the important thing to understand here is that a hundred percent. If if you listen to a social impact bond presentation by Sir Ronald Cohen, by Tracy Palangian, by whoever gives the presentation. They will mention social enterprise half the time, and the other half the time they will mention nonprofit. Okay. Well, you can, but you can, but, but, but can. They, they've done 38 bonds. Brookings did the landscape. There's not a single social enterprise funded in any of the 38 bonds. So while they talk about social enterprise, they don't fund social enterprise. The other thing Cohen will say is social impact bonds are the investment capital for nonprofit. That's actually a, a, a good way of saying it, but it's also an, a, an admission that they really are exclusively nonprofit focused. So that basically says, number one, since you're a nonprofit, you're already perfectly tied into the social impact bond model. That's how it works. So the question then becomes one of, you made the decision and you've done this remarkable thing which is to enable the $22 million to fund the 53,000 schools. And you know that for $18 million more, you can go to 100,000 schools, 20 million, 22 million, whatever the number is. So that's a predictable thing that you know you can do. And to be honest with you, I'm not suggesting you change anything for that. You should just keep doing that exactly the way you've done it in the past, okay? What we then do is we take the healthcare effort and we separate that out as a collaborative effort that you're going to do with multiple other people. Where the scale story that gets created is we're going to go from 500 villages to 50,000 villages. We're going to go to the villages we are already in with the healthcare model. That's what we fund as a scale model is that part of the deal. Because right now, what you have is a situation where every time you get donor money, you have to choose, do I do another school or do I do something in healthcare? What we want to enable you to do is focus your enormous success 